Hey, when you see a chemical change, there's four things you can tell if yep. you want to see a chemical change. So let's talk about each of those changes. The first right. one is you can notice is that a gas is given off. Right. Now this is a gas going off. Not to be confused with a liquid becoming a gas. This is when you mix things or or uh, modify a chemical some way where it releases a gas. But it's, we're not talking about liquid to gas um, state of matter change. So a common example of this would be like um, vinegar being added to baking soda. So this right here is the chemical for vinegar. So copy yeah. this down here, guys. Okay. And then this is baking soda. I'll just call it BS. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Mm. And that makes sodium acetate. Ah, my pen. Plus water. Uh huh. Plus carbon dioxide. CO2. Yeah, so let's watch a little video clip and see what happens when we mix these together. Okay, and notice in the video clip, um, a gas will be given off, I hope. This is an example of a chemical change. You see, I went to my favorite chemical supply store. That would be the grocery store. And I bought some baking soda and some vinegar. Probably a lot of you have seen this. If I take some vinegar and I pour some vinegar into the Erlenmeyer flask, this is a Erlenmeyer flask, and then I add the uh, baking soda to it, we'll see a chemical change. And I will know it's a chemical change, and I'll tell you why in just a second. Because, as you can see, it's fizzing right here. It's producing a gas. And it's bubbling over, as you can see, and a gas is given off. So one indicator of a chemical change is that a gas is given off. So that was the first one. That's pretty cool. Very nice. Yeah, very Love nice. the mess you made there, too. Yes, I did. Okay. Our, our next one, we're going to talk about light and heat. So if light and heat is given off, mm -hmm. you can see a reaction. A classic reaction of that is that you can take magnesium, Ooh. and then you can just burn it in the presence of air. And it actually simply just turns into magnesium oxide solid. Yeah. But the key thing is you get tons of energy. Yeah. And it, it gets very hot and very bright. Now this actually, if you ever witness this happening, don't stare directly at it, just like you don't want to stare directly at a welding arc, because you will scorch your retinas. Yeah, that would be that bad. So let's, yeah. let's, let's actually watch this very same thing. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to perform one more chemical reaction, and we're going to see another chemical change. And uh, let's just do the reaction, and we'll talk about it when it's done. I got my trusty little torch here, and we're just going to light a piece of magnesium and it's going to react with the oxygen in the air. That is amazing. Ooh, so that bright. is so bright, Mr. So Sam. So you can see there's light being given off and I can feel the heat being given off from here as well. So light and heat being given off, those are two indications that a chemical reaction has taken place. And you can also see we had a piece of shiny metal to start with and now we've got a white powder that's left over. So we also have a color change. This is magnesium oxide. That's what happens when you combine the magnesium with the oxygen in the air. You form a new chemical substance. Cool. And we had amazing help from our assistant, <laughs> Beth Ann. All right, this next one is if you see a color change. Right. Color changes are pretty cool to see. If you see any kind of a color change, like if you're cooking a steak, uh -huh. does it change color? Oh, man, yeah. Well, it goes from a nice red to a nice crusty brown. There you go. Crusty brown. You must like those like well-done Oh, no, no, no. I like them totally rare, but I like the outside nice yeah, and fair seared. Enough. I'm, okay. Oh, man. So anyways, uh, color change, yeah. that is a chemical change. A couple Band-Aids, send it back out to graze. Yeah. Oh, that's the kind of meat. Now, the one we're going to watch here in a little bit, it's pretty cool. You're going to see um, lead nitrate, so PB. Nitrate is a funny one, NO3. And there's a two here. You'll learn more about that later. And we're going to react that with potassium iodide. And that's going to make PBI2. And this is a very cool chemical. Yep. Plus potassium nitrate. nitrate. You can even put a two here, I think, and a two there mm -hmm. to balance it. We'll learn more about balancing. Yep. But this is a very cool chemical, is that when you see this, it's a very bright yellow color. So, um, so yeah. Yeah, let's watch that. Now, in addition to the color change, one more chemical react, uh, indicator of a chemical reaction that we're also going to see in this is the formation of what's called a precipitate. Now, a precipitate is when you take two solutions, two homogeneous mixtures of, of um, ionic compounds dissolved in water, you mix them together, and instead of still having two solutions, a solid forms, and that solid is called a precipitate. Now, don't confuse that with precipitation, like rain coming out of the sky, but the solid being formed just kind of means it comes out of and falls down to the bottom. That's really what we talk about when something precipitates, like rain. It comes out of the sky and falls down to the ground. The solid comes out of the solution and falls to the bottom of the container. So let's actually watch this cool reaction that we talked about in our previous slide right here. Yep. It'll make a yellow precipitate, and it will be solid. 
solid, as we talked about. And yeah, so let's uh, give our attention to this. We're going to do another chemical change. At this one, we're going to mix uh, lead, nitrate, and potassium iodide. And it's going to form a gamma precipitate, which will also change the color. Way cool. It looks like paint. <laughs> so why is that an indicator of a chemical change, Bethann? It is an indicator of a chemical change because it changes color and it also forms a precipitate. Now what's a precipitate? Precipitate is any kind of solid or it looks like the cloudiness of this one also. So if that's set for a long period of time, what would you see? You would see um, a solid or like a powdery substance settled at the bottom of the liquid. And it would be clear at the top. So yeah, the yellow, it's like a yellow powder. They actually use this substance, or they used to, to make paint. So how will you know if uh, a, sub a change is either physical or chemical? Well, if it undergoes one of the four indicators yeah, that so we just talked about. Chemical, you're looking chemical. for the four indicators. And physical, remember, it doesn't change what it is. Right. OK, so let's just do some examples. Right. So what do you got there, Mr. Uh, how about I get up in the morning, and uh, I crack an egg, and I fry it up in a frying pan. Now, if you cook an egg, when you fry it, mm -hmm. it changes a little bit. It does. In fact, if I think about it, it changes color, right? It does change color. So it if it changes clear color, I would call that a chemical change. Yeah, and uh, um, and kind of kind of brown. So we we denature the proteins, and then it starts to react. Those proteins start to bond up with carbohydrates and yep. things like that, turn into new substances. Actually, I think it changes at egg whites. Isn't it a, a, a primary protein that turns into a secondary or tertiary protein? Uh, it's, like, or something like that? the other way around. Or the other way around? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Anyways, you didn't need to know that. The point is it changes color, <laughs> and um, that makes it a physical change. Yeah. Or a chemical change. I said yeah. that wrong. Guys, anytime you see the word cooking or baking, it's going to be a chemical change. Okay. Those of you who want to go into the culinary arts, it's a good thing you're taking chemistry because it's all chemistry. Cooking and baking is all chemistry. Here I got another one for you, Mr. Sims. Right. Dissolve salt. Yeah. Take like salt. We did that a while back in one yeah. of our previous video clips. Well, you know, I put that salt in the water and it, salt went away. It did. It went away. It did. So, um, let's see. There was no chemical, there was no uh, color change. No change of color. There was no gas given off. No gas. I didn't see heat no or light. lights. No, no precipitate. So, so it probably wasn't a chemical it's change. It's physical. It is a physical change. Okay, it's by like dissolving it, if I take salt and I dissolve it in water and I drink it, you know what it tastes like? Uh, I think it tastes like it salt. It tastes like salt. So there's still salt in there and it's still salt and it has hasn't become anything else, it's just changed its state. This is actually how you would write this, NACL, and the little S, by the way, stands for solid, solid. and the little AQ stands for aqueous, aqueous. and that's with the uh, formula that we would do. Yep. What if I were to take some paper, uh -huh. and I were to burn it? Okay, well, anytime you burn something, you react it with oxygen, and it becomes something else. Oh, yeah, and there's a, there's a color change. Color change? Yeah. Heat and light? And heat and light's mm -hmm. given off, yeah, good. So I call that Kim. Yeah, yeah. but no, instead of burning it, I just take a piece of paper and I crumple it up. Crumple the paper. So yeah. I crumple the paper. Uh, uh -huh. Look, still, um, I, I'm looking at that piece of paper you got in your hand. Yeah, hands. and it looks the, still looks like paper. Yeah, to me. its shape has changed. Its shape has changed. And its volume has kind of changed, but um, I, I'm gonna call that physical. I think you're right. Yeah, and I, I think you had one more. What was that? Uh, oh, melting iron. Oh yeah, take iron. Just a piece of iron, like a nail, mm -hmm. and you really, 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 uh, really, 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 really heat it up. Really hot. Really, really hot. You know what happens when you really, really heat iron up? You melt it. It turns into. Uh, Liquid, liquid iron. Yeah. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Liquid iron. All right. What's going on with that? Uh, it's just a physical change. It's still yeah. iron. Yeah. Another way to think about this, folks, is, um, well, I, I was going to say it's reversible. All reactions are technically reversible. But if you can kind of undo something real easily, it's yeah. probably physical. It's probably physical. Yeah. It's not the greatest example. But think of, if you can undo it, it's probably physical. Okay. So, folks, that's, that's the end of this quick little podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye. Bye.